My name is Jennifer Baker. I'm a painter and sculptor and have had my studio in the Northern Liberties neighborhood of Philadelphia since 1978. In 2019, I had a solo show at the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art in Loretto, Pennsylvania. My first solo museum exhibit included all of the images I have made of Northern Liberties over a period of 30 years. They are my observations of how this small Philadelphia neighborhood has changed from a working class neighborhood of row houses, factories, and other small businesses to one of new urban McMansions and restaurants catering to the young and hip. My images show this transformation and examine what happens to people as neighborhoods change and the memory of what has gone before is erased. For years, artist Jenny Baker and her writer husband, Stephen Salisbury, gave me free room and board when I had to work two days in a row in Philadelphia. So how do I pay them back? When Jenny had her museum show and asked me to drive out and make a film about it, I said, no. Sure, MapQuest said it was only five and a half hours from my Ocean City home. But what if I got lost and ended up in Richmond? Then it would take me almost 10 hours. What kind of wretch am I? The Book of Common Prayer sure has me pegged right. I have followed too much the devices and desires of my own heart. I have left undone that which I ought to have done. I am, in a word, a miserable offender. But it's never too late to do the right thing Jenny, I will make a movie about your show, and I'm going to use the words of that great writerly husband of yours to accompany your images. Painting Among the Ruins by Stephen Salisbury. When painter and sculptor Jennifer Baker first moved to the old Philadelphia neighborhood of Northern Liberties in the 1970s, she did so because an artist could get dirt cheap studio and living space there. No one other than artists wanted to move in and everyone already there wanted to move out. That's an exaggeration, of course, but the hard fact is that the metal shops and tanneries, the stores, the brewers, the dressmakers, the tailors, and all the other small workshops and businesses that gave the district its variegated flavor were exiting or failing or just closing down. In the 1960s, when Philadelphia housing and development officials looked at Northern Liberties, which lies just north of Independence Hall and served as home to many workers, they saw blight. The bulldozers followed in short order and half of Northern Liberties was leveled. It was the heyday of imperial urban renewal. Hundreds of historic houses and buildings were demolished to bring forth parking lots, underused manufacturing buildings, and warehouses. The workers had had enough. They exited too. The second wave of decimation, in part a response to the first, began in the 1980s. The fires chronicled in Baker's work were not set by city officials. Rather, they were a byproduct of those officials' indifference. Collateral damage. Baker is not indifferent. Her poignant chronicle of this Philadelphia landscape is an epic narrative in miniature, the story of the nation writ in the crumbling bricks of Mel's studio or the demolition of Burke Brothers' tannery or the fires that consume the Morris Schiff building or the mattress warehouse.
I am going to briefly pause my reading of Stefan's essay. Many of the images you have been looking at are called monoprints, meaning a one-of-a-kind printed image on paper. Jenny explains why she started making these. I started out as a sculptor, and I made very large sculptures of life-size figures and environments. Some of them were painted, but these pieces took sometimes a year to complete. When my daughter was born, I thought this was not going to work. It was going to take forever to complete one piece. I started making monoprints. I found I could make and complete one piece while she was at the babysitter's for two or three hours. That was a great revelation to move on to these faster pieces. That and the real sense of immediacy you get from monoprints. Jenny is a true evangelist for the monoprint technique. She ran a number of workshops to teach local people as well as St. Francis University students how to do it. Now, back to Stefan's essay. Her images of forlorn people, homeless, living under an overpass, give a sense of the human consequences of the urban planning onslaught and subsequent cynical indifference. The jaws of demolition machinery eat away at buildings that once housed workers and families. Fires consume places that once provided jobs. Buildings collapse from the weight of neglect. About the only markers for the neighborhood surviving the decades-long attack are the spires and domes of the churches, outposts of a former life. What happened to the people who lived in what had once been the very heart of Philadelphia's industrial landscape, where workers from all over the world came to use their skills and make homes and lives? Like the buildings, they vanished. Baker's small scene of a house fire on Wildy Street hints at the unstated tragic aftermath. The two families and multiple children who once lived in that house spent a week in a downtown hotel housed there by the Red Cross. They then just vanished into the night. The house was boarded up for some time before it was completely knocked down. A new house rose in its place, and here we come to the most recent act of the ongoing drama. After nearly a half century of fire, demolition, and official disinterest, Northern Liberties became an empty, fallow field, a land bank of hundreds of acres ready for reinvestment. And reinvestment came, as Baker shows. In Kevin the Builder, What's left of the old neighborhood stretches out below a figure looking down from a rooftop rampart. The allusion to a lookout is very real. What enemy other than a few old-time residents could be out there? What foes still need to be vanquished? Two images, each titled The Wall, depict construction of massive townhouses that indeed seem to form a wall, a fortification designed to hold back the old neighborhood, which still rises in the form of St. Michael's Church in the background. In the past decade and a half, Northern Liberties has been completely transformed or obliterated, depending on your point of view. 
Former residents returning do not recognize the once familiar streets. What had been a neighborhood of European immigrants, African Americans, and Latinos, artists, artisans, and workers, is now increasingly white and upper middle class. The question remains, what to do when your home is obliterated, and not just your home, but the entire landscape of your past? Yes, there are new residences, but where is Schmidt's Brewery? It is lost in a past where Northern Liberties was filled with the smell of roasting hops. In its place, a residential commercial complex aimed at young single people now sits. Where is Harry's Hardware, or Dee's Sandwiches, or Bill's Family House? All gone in piles of bricks, tossed into dumpsters, and hauled away. New structures rise, making the disappearances unnoticeable to the casual observer. What isn't there is indeed invisible. The emotional toll of this devastating process on people who once called Northern Liberty's home has not been measured. In fact, the impact of wholesale, quote, renewal, unquote, has not been widely tracked anywhere in the country. But there's no question that when a familiar landscape is obliterated, mixed in with the feelings of anger, grief, and loss, is an overwhelming sense of disorientation. Where is Pop's store? Didn't it used to be there? Where am I? The irony is that most of the slick seven-figure townhouses and condo complexes built on land once occupied by sturdy brick row houses are already falling apart. They offer the veneer of permanence, the illusion of solidity, all crafted from dry vet, the miracle cure. Jennifer Baker's monoprints and paintings are a roadmap of this catastrophic destruction of memory and its flimsy subsequent redo. It might be said that she rescues memory. She shows the field of battle and its ruinous outcome. And the forlorn people, the people ignored, the people who are left to collect cans for resale, the people who have nothing to do but watch a front loader bring Bill's building wall down, and who have no place to live but under an open viaduct. Those who might speak for themselves if they didn't keep vanishing. In addition to her many images of Philadelphia's Northern Liberties neighborhood, Jenny exhibited paintings from a more rural setting. Several years ago, I took a trip to central Pennsylvania to visit Centralia, a former mining town, where in 1962, a fire was started in an abandoned mine shaft. It has been burning for over 50 years. I was taken with the image of what was left of this once vibrant community. Four isolated houses occupied by people in their 90s who refused to leave the dying town. Streets that went to and from nowhere, a cemetery, and a pitted and smoldering landscape. Now even those last four houses are gone. So many nice people and creatures went to Jenny's opening.
and even my identical twin brother put in an appearance. He said both Jenny's show and the dinner afterwards were fantastic. Could my shame for not going be any greater? I guess I am simply irredeemable. I forgive you, John. No need to worry. Yes! Save through grace. No wonder I was the star of my confirmation class.